Black Magic Design released their newest version of DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 17.2 yesterday. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the new features and changes they made in the software. Uh, and you can start by going to their support page, which I'll link. I'll put a, the link in the description. I also have it up on the screen here, but it's their support page. And you come right up to the top, and you see that they have both the free version, which is uh, Resolve 17.2, and the studio version, which is the paid version. And they also updated Fusion Studio. So you just come in here, click on the operating system you use, fill out some information, and you'll be able to download the software and install it. Now you could install it right over top of your previous version, especially if you have uh, Resolve 17 already installed. The previous version was 17.1.1. Now that you have installed, I'll go over some of the new features and changes they made with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. One of the biggest changes they made with this newest version is the speed at which the program starts up. So the first time you run it after you install, it might take a similar amount of time to the previous version. But once you've installed it and ran it for the first time, when you double click on it and start it, it runs, at least on my two systems, about twice as fast. So it opens up in probably a little bit less than half the time. So on this system before, it took about maybe 12 seconds to open, 15 seconds. And I'll time it here, so I'll double click. It took about five seconds to get to this point where it was taking probably close to like 25 seconds. So then I'll open a new project and it goes right to the window. So it's they made a huge improvement on the speed in which uh, the program starts up. Uh, my other system, it took about 45 seconds before. And again, it takes between 22 and 25 now. Now, the first time you like start up your system, the first time you run it, it'll probably still be a little bit slower. But any subsequent times that after your system's been running for a while and you close and reopen Resolve, it'll open much quicker. One of the next big changes they made in the newest version of Resolve 17.2 was the ability to rename clips that you've added to the timeline. So if you drag one of your clips out of your media pool, put it onto your timeline. And let's say uh, you wanted to add another instance of it and we're editing it and you add another instance of the same clip. Before they'd have the same name and you couldn't change that. But now if you left click on a clip, go into the inspector and go to file, you scroll down and you'll see the name. And then you can name this whatever you want. So you call this one clip one, which is really descriptive, but then I go to this one and rename this one clip two. It just helps you organize your clips a little easier uh, so you could recognize which one you could give it more descriptive name of course but it does help with organization on the timeline and finding uh, the clips that you've added the next new feature they've added was the ability to add transitions by just double clicking on them from the toolbar over here so before you'd have to drag it over to the spot where you want it or you could right click on it and click add to selected edit Right now, this newest version, you just choose the one you want to use and double click on it, and then I'll add it to the nearest edit point. And from here, you could customize it like before, you change any settings you want. But uh, that's a handy feature just to be able to quickly double click and add a transition, uh, kind of speed up your workflow. A lot of the big changes they made is to the Fairlight page, they made quite a few different changes there. And one of the changes they made was the way uh, the waveforms appear once you've, you're have you on the Fairlight page. So back to the edit page. They look pretty similar to the way they did before. But if you switch over to Fairlight, you'll see they made quite a bit of a difference. They seem to be kind of more contrasty. Now, I guess it will be, time will tell if it's actually uh, makes your use of Fairlight more efficient with the way they're drawing the waveforms now, but that is one of the changes they made in uh, Resolve 17.2. Another change that they've made is to the Fairlight page, and that's the ability to customize and apply batch fades. So if you needed the same fade basically on a bunch of different um, transitions between different clips, you, you can come up here, come to batch fade settings, and then you can choose to uh, do a fade in, cross fade, or a fade out. 
if you lose it here, then you could add and change and make different changes to how the fade works, the length of the fade. You overwrite the existing one, and again, you could do the fade in, cross fade, or fade out. And then you can apply it. And it'll do fade unit in frames, or you can also do milliseconds. Change the duration. And also under the Fairlight menu up here, have apply batch fades. So that way, it'll once you have it all set up, uh, it will apply the fades to all your different changes from one clip to another. Another pretty big feature they added to Resolve uh, has to do with using Fusion templates. Uh, you've been able to create Fusion templates and add them, but you basically had to add them as individual files before. And now they've added something called Fusion Bundles, which allows you to take all of your different either transitions or titles or any of the effects you want and add them uh, all in one file called a DRFX file, which is basically just a zip file. And then you know, after you create it, you can rename it DRFX. And then you can actually drag and drop it directly onto your uh, node editor in Fusion, and that will add it to your uh, list of effects. Uh, you might have to restart Resolve to get it to show up, but it is pretty handy, especially for people creating uh, different like transition packs or title packs or uh, any kind of creators doing that kind of thing. Instead of having like 50 individual files that someone has to uh, drag and drop into the folder structure of Resolve, uh, in the Fusion tab, you would just create one file, you know, open here and go to 7-zip and actually it just opens like a regular zip archive. And then you can see it here. So I can double click under edit and here are the different ones. And these are the ones built in that come with Resolve 17.2. We can see all the different ones and it also gives support so that you could do uh, actually have custom uh, pictures for it. So before, if you created your own, say, titles, And here you can see the built-in ones have these nice pictures next to it, but the built-in ones, you can look here, would just have a, like a blank, like a generic picture for it. So now you can, now you've actually added support, so you could add your own, and you can also add images and things to your titles and transitions and effects, um, and bundle it into that same DRFX file. That's a really nice addition, and we'll be doing a follow-up video kind of going more into detail on how to set up a DRFX file and add it uh, into your uh, version of Resolve. But that was a nice addition to Resolve 17.2. They've made quite a few other changes, especially in the Fairlight page of Resolve 17.2, but this is where I'm gonna end this video. Uh, they did also add in uh, by default live save, so that uh, that will be activated by default. But there were some nice additions into this Resolve 17.2. They've also fixed some uh, problems they had with some of their existing titles that people have been complaining about on the uh, forum. But that's the end of this video. I'll be going adding some new videos, go over the individual features uh, in the coming weeks on Resolve 17.2. But I hope you found this video useful, and I thank you for watching.